So we have ordered another Plum Quick motor. I want to go ahead and open this thing up on camera and take a look at it with you guys as well for the very first time. I forgot the way Plum Quick likes to ship their stuff. Tape just doesn't cut it, which is good to know. Some other companies, um, they don't use anything other but than tape. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you remember my first unboxing of the Plum Quick Band. It was very similar to this. Had a lot of cardboard in it for packing. And here we have, please read first. It just talks about, you know, what not to do with the motor and everything. I have a card from Plum Quick. Very cool. We got some more pieces in here that's protecting the studs here. And remember the, uh, Speed sensor was covered as well. We got down here, we got some Plum Quick stickers as well. Throw in your toolbox or your golf cart. Let's stand up and grab this. Oh yes sir. This one's got some weight to it. Now on this motor here, this is the PQ48-437. This is a custom built motor, class H motor rating. It's got the high performance brushes, high torque for the 48 volt Sepix IQ system of club car. This motor is rated around 14.5 horsepower and you can see speeds around 17 to 22 miles per hour and that's just gonna be estimated. This right here motor is gonna add around 70% more torque over your stock motor and you must upgrade the controller as well. So also flat terrain and a good quality battery pack for these right here ratings. Now I'll link this motor and other motors in the description of the video where you can check them out as well. Go over there to Plum Quick, look around, see which motor is gonna fit your cart the best. So there's gonna be four wrenches you're gonna need to install your Plum Quick motors here. You're gonna have three mounting bolts on this side here. It's gonna take a 7 16 wrench to remove those away from the golf cart. Now as far as these motor studs here, this is going to be two of the four. So you have two small ones and two large ones. The large ones are going to be a half inch. The small ones are going to be a 7 16 inch. The reason I said you need four wrenches, you're going to need two wrenches to place on the bottom parts of the stud of both sides. And you're going to need two to go on the top portion of the studs for the mounting nut. Now what I've done here is I've taken some old wrenches and I've put them on the grinder and I've grinded them down. These right here fit perfectly on the bottom of the studs. So I can use my ratcheting wrench to remove these if I have to, or tighten them up. By doing that, the stud itself does not move inside the motor. I have a 7 16 and a half inch for doing so. I also have a 7 16 and a half inch for moving the top of the nuts as well into removing the mount from the motor to the golf cart. Now in case you're wondering why am I replacing one Plum Quick motor with another one, this is the Plum Quick Entry Level Bandit. I have this on my single cab golf cart or my four seater. Now let me tell you a little bit about the Bandit. It's great to use with all of your stock hardware and equipment. Okay. And one reason we're going to be replacing this one, this is a limo golf cart, it's lifted, it carries like six people, it has BFG all-terrain 27 inch tall tires on 15 inch wheels. I need the maximum amount of current flow for this golf cart. I don't care about going fast, I need torque. There's nothing wrong with this right here motor, it just does not fit this application. On this right here club car, it's going to take 7 16 inch mounting bolts. There's going to be three of them, one here, 
one here and one in the back back here so off camera you just can't see it at this angle like i mentioned 7 16 let's go ahead and remove those we can slide the motor off and lower it down now the wires are still connected i'm gonna leave the wires connected until we get the motor down once we get the motor down we'll unconnect the wires Now that we have all three of the mounting bolts removed from the differential in the motor, the motor is just not going to fall off. We're going to have to remove it from the shaft itself and slide it off and then lower it down. I'm going to say it's going to be really heavy. If you have a buddy that can help you out, that would be even better. Or if you need to go through the bagwell opening to access, that would be better as well. So we, since we have so much room down here, I'm going to just remove it and try to set it down lightly as is possible. I may be in the shot. Now since we have the motor off the golf cart now, next thing we're going to do is go ahead and uh, take apart all of those wires. Everything's going to be color coded. So I have the Plum Quick Bandit. This is the entry level Plum Quick motor to my left. The Plum Quick Rhino is one of their custom built uh, more torque motors that we're putting on the golf cart here, obviously. Um, but I want to do a side by side to show you the comparison in size. This right here motor, just as far as the can is concerned, not including the speed sensor. It's going to be roughly just shy of 9 inches uh, with the speed sensor about 10 inches. This motor here, not including the speed sensor, just the can itself is going to be roughly 10 and a half and with the speed sensor 11 inches. So this right here motor is going to be a little bit longer than the Bandit motor there. The speed sensors are also different on these motors. One's got a different, you know, kind of a Audi type speed sensor. This is a more uh, subtle, low uh, speed sensor that's going next to the motor itself. Both motors still have the handles. It's one of Plum Quick's things that they like to do here. But there you go. Now, as far as installation goes, it's the same process. Two wrenches, one on the bottom, one on the top to hold a stud in place. Remember to put the wires back in the same locations as you removed it from with the previous motor and to connect the speed sensors. Once we have everything installed, I'm going to just go ahead and slide it up onto the differential and lock it into place. Now the wires back on to the motor. We're just going to try to put the motor back into place and manhandle it into place. This is a heavy motor here. I feel confident I can do it by myself and get it onto the shaft. It might take a little time to do it, but I can do it. I will tell you this. These wires are the stock wires here. And uh, very soon I'm going to be replacing these with a much heavier duty wire. Because we're going to be changing the controller on this golf cart as well. <clears throat> Now, I'm just getting the bolt started in the motor itself. You can wiggle it back and forth. The bolt holes will line up. You do not want to tighten these bolts to compress the motor towards the rear end. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure to slide it up into the rear end itself. I've got the rear end. I've got the motor slid into place. Now we can start tightening these mounting bolts down. Remember, 7 16 here. 
So I didn't mention this when I was reviewing the motor when I had it out of the box. This is an L bracket here on your club car president and DS. Uh, this bolt here, I had to buy it. This is a 5 16th by 18 thread, one inches long. It was like 15 cents with the lock washer. And it takes a half inch ratchet to tighten it into the housing of the differential.